If you have questions, save them for later. They'll just make you nervous. This is pretty simple. You guys are gonna line up here behind this line in the corral every start. If you're not in there when that whistle blows, you can't just say, oh, I was a little late and run in and start. You gotta be there or you're out. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Are the micro walks on areas that are technical or are they just kind of short, steep hills? Yeah, yeah, those are fine. Those are fine. I'm just wondering as it gets later, do we plant the seed of, do we switch? Do you run the short, steep hills and walk the technical? Oh, I see what like, you're saying. Like, if there's like a really rocky rooted section that you think you could fall and kill yourself. No, she said the last part, she actually said you, this part was the most technical, yeah. was the most technical. I need to just, of... I need to just run my race, as they say. Saying this on camera actually makes me really nervous because I've been saying it to myself a lot and even to other people. And I honestly, this training, I vacillate between feeling amazing and like, oh yeah, I'm going to go farther than I've ever gone. I'm, this is my two no confidence, I'm a complete fraud, who do I think I am? These people have trained much harder than me, they're so much better. So I wanna be the last person standing. And to be the last person standing, I'm gonna to have to go farther than I've ever gone and push myself harder than I've ever pushed. And I want that to be the ending. And just saying that out loud is really scary because then all the negative thoughts come in of like, well, that's not gonna happen, dude. So you may as well just reside that it's not gonna happen. Um, but yeah, I want the ending where I'm tears of joy because I did this thing I worked so hard for and that I got. Nervousness, there was excitement, there was boredom. You're gonna need some tough love. You know, I think there's no other way around it. We'll try to keep him positive and keep his spirits up, but I think there's, gonna, there's always gonna be a point where you just need somebody to kind of like shake you and be like, listen, it's not a big deal. We're gonna get over this. Get through the lap, and let's do the do the next lap. Next lap will be better. I guess my goal to stay is at least to have a third place finish again and get the triple three, or first place, and to be the last OCR athlete standing. Sometimes in a race, you're thinking about that next mile or that next section, that big climb. But with this race, you really don't need to worry about the next lap or the next mile. It's just one step at a time, stay present, be in the moment. I don't know if it would matter if I was champ or not. I think every runner feels that same uh, pressure. I hope I can do what I, I think I can do. Cut this shit. It's more about variety, of keeping them interested. You get bored of the same food so quickly. I've got all these different kinds of soups, I've got all of these. Um, I picked up a load of frozen stuff I put in, gnocchi and, and all like high calorie stuff. I cooked like a green curry, so I'm just like cooking all day and having fun with it. <laughs> this is family friendly. <laughs> Look at the vibration. Maybe pee a little. Oh, yeah. oh,
Okay. Wow. <laughs> I'll uh, I'll take some long naps tonight. I'll try to get in 20 minute naps. Yeah, last lap sucked, but like I was just telling him, it's like if you have a bad lap, like try to not like you like your head wants to go, you're fucked, this is horrible, you're gonna beat, but it's like, oh, it's just a bad lap. In most ultras, people scatter out and it's a very so solitary event. But in this event, it's very social. So you have all these people battling shoulder to shoulder for a day or more. Come on! Come, come, come! And when you reach some goal that's so important to yourself, and you had these people experience it with you, it's, it's, a, it's an experience that you can't really describe. Uh, I think the highs that happen in this is this uh, collective battle that these runners go through together and, and, and what they deal with and, and, and the experience of these loops that are just repeating and never ending and the, and the days change and the sun comes up and the sun goes down. Most events you have a set distance and you have your highs and lows and when you have your lows you might have you know, an hour where you're trying to put in nutrition, you might take a, you might sit down for a little bit, but here you can't do that. Every lap has to be perfect, and it's just absolutely relentless. I think this is one of the toughest format events there is out there. The first loop you do the stairs doesn't seem that bad and then as the race goes on it, you know it's like where did this Mount Everest come from? Over time just completely uh, takes a toll on the body and the legs and the quads. Yeah, I'm still waiting on that rain. I heard it got pushed back from 3 to 6 a.m. So yeah. I'm a little disappointed about that. That lot sucked so fucking bad. I'm so happy. I don't have to do those stairs again for a long fucking time. Time is a construct. <laughs> This course is on par with the one that Gary Cantrell has in his backyard. Gary's probably has a little bit more elevation, but Gary's road loop is easier than Tad's road loop here. So the Ode de Laz uh, road loop is a little bit more difficult, so you don't get as much rest at, in the nighttime section as you would at Gary's. What was it? Gary just put his shirt on. Right, right. <laughs> I'm a little sad about it. Let the other runners in. When the sun goes down, I won't get to miss out on much. I enjoyed the first 12 hours, though. The thing that I said to my friend when, so she quit, she quit at mile, like the last aid station, basically. Like she quit at like mile 42. And I said, no one's ever regret finishing 
ever. You know what I mean? Like if you finish, you're just happy you did. And the, the DNF part, you can regret. But no one, like no one's ever gone, yeah, I just walked it in and I regret it. <laughs> you know, they're, you're, you're never, so I, yeah. I mean, this one's so different because you literally do not know the finish line. You literally do not know. All you know is to keep doing loops until they tell you you're done. Any event that you compete through the time cycle of the day is remarkable. Most of us don't choose to start our workout in the middle of the night and run through the dawn. So it's a whole different experience at night than it is during the day. Um, the night always kind of excites me. I think I got this memory of when I was a kid and we used to go on vacation and we'd get up early in the morning and it was dark and it seemed like no one else was up or awake. So I kind of I kind of like that. I like the peace of the night too and that, that's typically you know, when you get in the later stages of the miles. So that's, for me at least, that's when things start to really gel. I prefer the trails over the roads. And it was the downhills on all the roads, just the pounding. So I was running on the grass on the side of the road because of the fact that I was trying to, to get through that and slowly just like the quad burn and lock and then clock is on for me, I think. They lied about this road. They fucking lied. Nobody lied about anything. They fucking lied, Brett. It's not fun. Uh, and there's still like 350 feet of elevation change. It yeah. is uh, a little bit harder. Yeah, you know, it's, it's not flat. Boiling water, fish some of this rice in your mouth. You got time. Come on, yeah, you got time. Start. You got time. Just sit here. Eat something. Come on. I get in. And my crew's waiting, and I'm like, guys, I'm done. I'm done. And they're like screaming at me. Like 10 people pounced on me, including total strangers. No, you got to go out. This is the 100K lap. What are you doing? Of course, you're going to not quit. And I was like, oh, yeah, this is what I asked them to do. But in the moment, I really didn't want to. But it was, in fact, what I'd asked them to do. but I didn't make it to the turnaround until 32 minutes, and I was like, well, unless I negative split this finish, it ain't, it ain't happening. He was in his own little world when I saw him going down the hill to the turn, and he just wasn't responding. He was kind of in a bad little mood, so he'll finish the lap, but he'll just time out. <laughs> Lucy, better be good. Going good. Yeah. Rain just started, so Looks race like is starting. Ten We're minutes. Nice. Cool off. Make this a fun race now. Yeah. See who hangs I slept out. For like an hour fifteen. I think this is always like a low point in the in the night. You know, you got that witching hour before the, the sunrise, and as soon as the sun rises, she'll she'll be fine again.
People who have not run a backyard ultra think that if they're fast and they have lots of speed that they can do well here. That's really not always the case. It helps to have speed because you can do loops at a very low effort pace and that helps conserve your energy. But fast people tend to not run for very long. That is, they might finish their 100 milers in 14, 15, 16 hours. You need somebody who can go 30 or 35 or 40 hours at a race like this. I was ready to ready to call it, and then they forced me to go back out there. So that was horrible. part was it got really muddy I just had road shoes talked him into another lab <laughs> so I just told him I he doesn't have to do it but I think he can he told Matt Davis in the middle of the night that you time out of this course you don't quit to see these runners like do this it's just so overwhelming for my heart like I'm it's just like these efforts like it's all hard at this point and like my heart is exploding
that last one, I, I, I put everything I had into it, and I know I couldn't get back in time. And uh, I'd never been above 108, so I feel, I feel pretty good about 133. I made such great friends, you know, everybody that's left. Um, you know, I got to know really well, so I got a little teary-eyed with that whole thing, but that was pretty cool. My body just shut down on me at the end. <laughs> 30 hours of running is hard. Good job, Peter. Boat to last lap 42. Coming up. Hey, Peter, you don't, you don't have, to, have to go. You don't have to run. Because you have one more than uh, Sarah does. Um, I, I just wasn't getting the calories in and I was so tired and I think because I battled and it was so hard all day in mud and I just physically was drained I I wasn't functioning like I, I knew I needed more calories but I was you know want them and at night it's hard to eat anyway so um, yeah it was a couple of loops leading up to that final one that I knew I was dipping I I didn't put enough in 
um, and that was kind of all played out. button. <laughs>